it's something we have taken for granted for years, clean and safe drinking water. But problems in Flint, Michigan and other places have now created concerns and plenty of doubt. And here in our area, an attorney in a scientific study and a local 12 news now raising questions about what might have been in the water for thousands of people. Local 12's Jeff Hirsch has our investigation. Whether you turn on the faucet in Cincinnati or in northern Kentucky, your water starts from the same place, the Ohio River. And before the river water is treated, it can contain some chemicals. At one point in time, as lawsuits and scientific reports have noted, something called PFOA, which is used in materials like Teflon anti-stick coating, microwave popcorn bags, and cleaning products. PFOA stands for a chemical called perfluorooctanoic acid. And consuming water contaminated with PFOA can be dangerous. A panel of scientific experts has connected PFOA to six diseases. And that included kidney cancer, testicular cancer, ulcerative colitis, thyroid disease, preeclampsia, and high cholesterol. And PFOA has been linked as a plausible explanation, that's a quote from a scientific study, to girls in northern Kentucky. The study was done for the National Institutes of Health and included researchers from the University of Cincinnati. It's circumstantial evidence, not a slam dunk. But to a northern Kentucky attorney who's been researching PFOA for the past 15 years, it's reason enough for the public to be put on notice and for blood tests to be made available to the community. And what these studies show are that uh, young girls who had their blood tested, um, who actually lived in northern Kentucky, and apparently were on northern Kentucky drinking water, um, had significantly elevated levels of this chemical, PFOA, in their blood. Rob Ballot is with Taft, Statinius, and Hollister. Ballot's long and ultimately successful battle with DuPont Chemical about PFOA contamination in West Virginia and Eastern Ohio was a cover story recently in the New York Times Magazine. The article explains how Ballot figured out that PFOA discharge from a chemical plant, a DuPont chemical plant in Parkersburg, West Virginia, had been polluting the Ohio River, that's drinking water for them too, polluting the Ohio River for years. Ballot won a class action lawsuit which included free medical monitoring for 70,000 customers near the plant and the chance to pursue financial damages if those customers had any of the six diseases. 3,500 customers are pursuing claims. But as we all know, the Ohio River flows down to us from Parkersburg and PFOA can flow down with it. In 2005 and 2006, the medical study for the NIH tested a total of 356 to 8-year-old girls on both sides of the river. The results? Much higher PFOA levels in the northern Kentucky girls. But it's taken this long for scientists to fully analyze and publish the results. But why girls in northern Kentucky and not in Cincinnati? It's the same Ohio River, and the girls only lived a few miles apart. But water treatment was different here in northern Kentucky, where I'm standing now, than it was on the other side of the river in Ohio. The study, published in 2014, says results suggest that a source 285 miles upriver, that's the DuPont plant, may have contributed to exposures to girls from northern Kentucky through their drinking water, while girls in southwest Ohio had lesser exposure because of the use of granular activated carbon filters for water treatment. Northern Kentucky added carbon filtration in 2012. But people could have possibly been drinking PFOA contaminated water before that for years. Attorney Balot says PFOA had gone into the Ohio for decades. This chemical is a very persistent chemical. It will stay in the body for many, many years. So, now what does Attorney Balot want to happen? And what does the Northern Kentucky Water District have to say? Those answers after. And now back to our Local 12 investigation. We are looking into northern Kentucky water and what the agency which provides that water has to say about Attorney Rob Ballot's demands for immediate action. This chemical is a very persistent chemical. It will stay in the body for many, many years. Ballot has written to federal and state regulators saying the need for immediate, meaningful, community-wide public disclosure in this regard is imperative to protect public health. Uh, because if, in fact, it was coming from the drinking water, 
before it was filtered. Um, it wouldn't, uh, the elevated blood levels wouldn't be limited to just the small group of people who were studied. You would be expected to be something found within the broader community. The Northern Kentucky Water District declined our request for an on-camera interview, but Engineering Vice President Amy Kramer did talk with me by phone and answered questions via email. Kramer says there's no detectable PFOA in Northern Kentucky's drinking water now. They've tested the past couple of years. And she says Northern Kentucky Water District does not believe sufficient data exists to support the theory that drinking water was the pathway to elevated PFOA levels in the study a decade ago. Kramer says the district was notified in 2007 of the study's then tentative findings. The district tested the water in the river, found no PFOA contamination, and got the same results in 2010. We didn't feel we should alarm the customers, Kramer says, when we have data that shows it's not in our water. Plus, Kramer points to the same 2014 article about the possible PFOA link to the chemical plant, which also says there are limitations to the study due to the inability to capture individual information on all possible sources of PFOA, such as food or household dust. But did girls in northern Kentucky really eat enough different food or live in that much house dust to cause a significantly different level of a chemical in their blood? Maybe, but maybe not. And if drinking water was the source, the scientists who did the study say it's not just the tested girls who were likely impacted. The higher serum concentrations, they say, that were discovered in the northern Kentucky girls probably are representative of all persons in the Northern Kentucky Water District during the same period. Which is why Rob Balot says the Northern Kentucky Water District's 300,000 customers deserve a lot more information. It's this is not clear at this point the extent to which the community realizes this is even a potential um, uh, exposure to, to even look at. The Northern Kentucky Water District now does have some information about PFOAs on the agency's website. It's in a section called General Information on Emerging Contaminants. And what it says is that you may have read or heard about PFOAs. Well, we have tested our water in 2014 and 2015, and there are no PFOAs in your drinking water. However, this section only went on there on February 24, 2016, less than a month ago, and only after attorney Rob Balot started writing letters and I started asking the water district some questions. There is nothing on this website about that potential link between PFOAs and young girls in that study. Jeff Hirsch, Local 12 News. Mm. Attorney Rob Balot and Local 12 News have contacted various state and federal agencies about possible medical monitoring for Northern Kentucky water customers. We will keep you updated once we get answers. Also, about 12% of Northern Kentucky District customers get their water from the Licking River, not the Ohio. The Water District tells Local 12 News it tested Licking River water in 2014 and 2015 after it left the plant and there were no detectable levels of the chemical PFOA. However, the licking was not tested in the river itself in 2007 and 2010, only the Ohio. Boone County and the city of Florence have gotten their water from the city of Cincinnati since 2003.